Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back or welcome to my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 220. If you missed my last episode, number 219, we talked about how to change negative thinking patterns post-trauma. I got very deeply into flow during my last episode talking about the impact that trauma has on our bodies, on our nervous systems, on our minds, and just on our lives is very near and dear to my heart. As always, I recommend my last episodes because that's just what you gotta do, right? You gotta recommend your stuff. But my last episode truly, I think, could benefit so many people. And I know that it's conversations that are challenging to have, potentially triggering to have, but I do think that a lot of growth can happen when we begin to face the things that pose fear. Obviously doing so in a way that feels safe, so whether that's with a therapist or a counselor or somebody that you love and trust, but if something makes you feel uncomfortable and is overwhelming, it's likely an indicator that there's work that needs to be done there. And so I definitely encourage you to check out that episode, see how it resonates with you, and just know that you're not alone in your experiences and that there is so much help out there for you and to help you. If you're watching video, I'm noticing we're maybe a little bit crooked. So I'm just kind of playing with my camera a little bit. I hope that that's better. I just gotta say that you, you and me, we need to talk. We need to have a chat, just you and me. And I really want to, I really want this episode to land for you and for you to actually hear me straight to your heart. I was laying in bed last night and it was one of those nights where my head was just like, oh, well we could do a podcast about this and, and we could talk about that. And I always get my best ideas right before I fall asleep, when I'm in kind of that phase one before deep sleep. And I actually had to get up last night and write down a couple ideas because I'm like, I can't lose these. I'm getting these downloads or these ideas for a reason. I need to write them down so I can talk about them. And today's episode was one of those ideas. And that was to talk about reasons you're not going after the things that you're telling yourself that you really want. So basically reasons why you keep holding yourself back, why you're not going after that thing that you want. And so I want you to contemplate is there an area of your life that you keep saying repeatedly over and over again that you want to do something, you're going to do something, you're gonna try something, etc. I want you to contemplate right now in this moment, is there something in your life that you keep saying that? We almost all have an area of our life that we're doing that, right? Whether it's like, I want to learn an instrument, I want to go to the gym more, I want to start a business, I want to start dating again, I want to get better at cooking, whatever it is, we almost all have an area of our life that we're seeking some form of growth in, that we want to try and we're curious about. I want to talk today about the reasons in which you're not going after those things. Because these are also all reasons that I myself am experiencing not going after something. And recognizing that it's something we all experience or else I wouldn't be talking about this in the first place. This is human nature to avoid things that we're uncertain about. We are so good at avoiding new things because we can't predict the outcome. There's off, the unknown poses us fear. But if there's a part of you that's telling you that you want to try these things, you're curious about these things, I've shared this before in the book, The Five Regrets of the Dying, the number one regret is didn't live a life true to yourself. And in that is not trying things. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna get on my deathbed and regret that I had tr didn't try certain things, regret that I didn't go after certain things. I want to at least say that I tried to do them. But having that perspective on a day-to-day -day basis is hard because it's not sitting in front of us. But I want you to imagine you have reached the end of your life. Are you gonna be more regretful of going after the things that you're telling yourself you want to or not? And my goal of this episode is to share the reasons in which you might be holding yourself back because at least then if we're aware of the reasons, we can do the work and become curious about it and see maybe what the resistance or block is to starting something. And I wanna say that I'm right there with you. 
So the reason that this kind of service for me is because if you've been listening over the last couple months, you've heard me share that I have a new business idea coming out and I've started it, I've completed some of the things, but I have yet to launch it or tell anybody about it. And I've put kind of secrecy posts about it on, on social media, like this is coming soon. And I haven't actually pulled the trigger to launch this new business. And that's what I was laying in bed thinking about last night. I'm like, why? What am I waiting for? Like what, as somebody who preaches, you know, just jump in and you'll figure it out as you go. I had to really be curious about why that was for me. And so first I want you to identify the area of your life. And now let's dive into some of the reasons and maybe see which one of these sticks up for you. So the first thing that I wrote down, and I, I largely think this is the one that I've been holding on to, is that you're waiting for the perfect time to be ready, to have it all figured out. I've kind of switched my method in which I'm doing what I'm doing. And because of that, because I haven't got the new equipment, I've told myself I'm not ready. But instead of just creating that momentum, knowing that that momentum will just lead to more flow and more progress, I just keep pushing it. And I also have yet to order the equipment, which is, I'm very curious about, like, what is my resistance to that? And so I encourage you to ask yourself, are you waiting for the perfect time to be ready to do something? And this was probably the number one thing that my clients used to tell me all the time of why they wouldn't do something, why they were holding themselves back, is because they were waiting for the perfect time. I waited for the perfect time to start my podcast for almost a year. And the perfect time never came. I just randomly decided to record one day and see what happens. And now here we are, almost three years later, still on this journey, but there's no perfect time. Yes, we can try our best to like align things and you know, maybe there's a certain season or you're waiting to be done school or whatever it is, but it's hard to say these things because I need to practice what I preach. Starting is the best way that you'll get ready because that is how you'll learn and, and adapt as you go. But if you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting, there's no progress and momentum happening and you're just going to stay in the same cycle. And so ask yourself, have you been waiting for the perfect time ready to be or waiting to be ready to do something and I want you to know that that perfect time almost never exists. The perfect time to start is now. And like I said, figure it out as you go. And so that is the number one reason that I had kind of brainstormed for myself of why we're not going after things we want. Stop waiting to be ready. You will never be ready. You will get ready and have more experience and exposure as you start to go and as you learn and insert whatever endeavor that is for you. It's gonna be different for all of us, but you will continue to get ready as you make progress and momentum. Number two, and this one kind of like stings a little bit, and this one definitely stings for me. You're not making it a priority or making a plan. That one I was like, oof, that's a truth bomb for me. I haven't been making this new business a priority. I've been making other things in my life a priority, which again, is fine if those things are more important. But if I'm then on the flip side feeling like shit because I haven't taken action towards something that I keep saying I'm going to do, that's when there's a problem. If you're fine with time passing by and you're like, whatever, that's just not the priority right now. That's one case. But another case is, are you annoyed with yourself that you haven't taken action? Are you annoyed with yourself that there's been no progress made? Because that's the boat that I'm in right now. And it's like, I, I reflect and I'm like, well, you're not making it a priority. You've had spare time that you've invested in other areas and you didn't invest it into this. So I can really only be upset with myself. And that's something that we need to hold ourselves accountable for. And that's another point. Are you holding yourself accountable to make it a priority? Have you made a plan? I told myself that this business was going to launch in February. We are the 10th of April today. And I have no plan of when I'm going to launch this business. And I'm not going to lie, I'm mad at myself about that. I'm defeated. I feel like I let myself down. I feel like I let people down that I 
communicated about this business to and I'm just like, Jesse, what are you doing? And so I know that the, one of the reasons why is because I haven't been prioritizing it and I didn't make a concrete plan. You need to hold yourself accountable and find a way to hold yourself accountable. So if instead on the post that I said, you know, something exciting is coming, if I would have put an exact date, that would have held me more accountable to be like on February 15th, this thing is being launched. Then I know I don't have a choice. I said something. I now need to follow through February 15th. I need to have this launched because I left it vague and open. There was, there wasn't enough necessity for me to hustle, to get it done. And so if this is something you find in your life that you're spiraling around, find a way to make a plan. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to revisit what is realistic. I'm going to set a date. I'm going to launch that date. So it holds me accountable publicly. And then it just gives you more necessity to do the things to get it done. When there's no plan, it's so easy to let ourselves down and to let things go. This rings true with any goal in life. If there is not a clear plan and a thought process of reverse engineering your goal down to the daily action, it likely won't get done. And so that is the second reason is you're not making it a priority. You haven't made a clear plan. The third one, oh God, this was 100% me at the beginning of my podcasting journey and something that I'm realizing is largely holding people back is that you're worried about how others will perceive you and you have a fear of judgment, which I first just want to say, we all have a fear of judgment. It is wired within us to fear what others think about us. We are all self-protective creatures. You can get better at that and you start to kind of care less as you build your self-belief and self-worth and have experience and whatever you believe in what you're doing. But when worrying about how others will perceive you as holding you back, I encourage you to ask yourself, is this about other people or is this about you? Because if the name of this episode, going after something you really want. If this is something that you genuinely want in your life, it needs to come from your heart space and from a place of authenticity that you trust that the right people will support you. I cannot vocalize enough that the people that I thought would support me the most with my business and with my podcast were ghosts. No encouragement, no sharing of my content, nothing. And for a while that defeated me. But then I started to meet people, strangers, that were supportive and kind and encouraging. And that's because they are my people. Going after what you want and choosing to go after what you want, it's going to weed people out. It's just power for the course, right? That's life. But it's also going to attract an abundance of new people into your orbit, into your life. That is the beautiful part of growth. When you choose to step into a new version of yourself, to go after something, to chase something, you're taking a step ahead. Some people are going to come with you. Some people are going to fall off and some new people are going to come in. And I cannot stress enough that that is a beautiful thing. Don't allow those people in your life that you fear will judge you to hold you back from doing something that could completely change your life and that you are meant to do. If your heart is telling you to do something and it feels pulled to do something, it feels that way for a reason. Your higher self, your higher consciousness Whatever it is that resonates with you is pulling you for a reason. You need to trust that that is what's best for you. As I said, my coach used to say, what if what's best for you is what's best for everybody else? I know that it's easy for shame to come in and fear to come in, but honestly, choosing you is the most badass, coolest thing that you can do. That is going to attract the right people and repel the wrong people out of your life. And that is what growth is. And that is such an important part of life. So many of us stick around the same people doing the same things. 
And we don't expose ourselves to new experiences and opportunities because we have such a fear of what the same people in our life are going to think. My coach used to also tell me, if you wouldn't trade places with this person, don't seek or don't allow them to give you feedback. If this person is not ahead of you in what you're doing, don't allow them to give you feedback or be very gentle with the feedback and criticism that you take. If you wouldn't trade places with someone, why are you allowing them to dictate the trajectory of your life? I'm preaching also a reflection of things that impacted my life. And once I decided to choose me, my whole life changed. And I've now been able to attract great people into my life and experiences and and, and a career and all these things only because I finally decided to choose what was best for me. Did I have a fear about how others would perceive me? Absolutely. But that fear starts to subside once you start to see what's the word I'm trying to think of? Once you start to reap what you sow in a positive way and you start to see the fruits of your labor, that's what I was trying to think of, it pays off. But if we keep going down a path that is not aligned out of fear of what other people will think of us, you will never reach that point of fulfillment. And so that is number three, is you're too worried about how others will perceive you. Again, I wanna validate, normal, 100% normal. But I promise that that will hold you back And if I'm being truly honest, it's not worth it. If the people in your life are gonna judge you for doing something that you feel pulled to do, they're not your people, they're just not. And I know that that's hard to say and to accept and to bring into your reality, but it is unfortunately true. The right people will be there to support you. Okay, number four, you have a subconscious core belief that's blocking you. What I mean by this is that little voice in your head that every time you try to go after whatever this thing is for you, you have a voice that comes on in your head that says, I'm not worthy, I'm stupid, I could never figure this out, this is too much for me, Um, I could never be successful, I'm not worthy of being successful. All those inner voices come in. And really what that is, is a subconscious core belief that we have suppressed within our body. When I first started this podcast, what kept playing in my head is I'm not smart enough and I'm not capable enough. I decided to challenge those beliefs by outworking them, by getting curious and trying to figure it out. Because no, in the beginning, I really wasn't quote unquote capable. I had to figure out how to do the things. I didn't just know how to do all this and how to record the videos. My videos only came, only started in the last like year or so. I didn't know how to do any of this or how to edit or how to edit my audio, how to, you know, add music and upload. I didn't know how to do any of those things, but I figured it out. But I definitely had a core belief in there that was holding me back for so long of saying that I'm less than. And I definitely have areas right now, I wanna learn how to play the fiddle or the violin so bad. It's so bad, it feels 10 out of 10 aligned, but I keep having a thought in my head that's like, you'll never figure it out, you're too old to do that. And it's like, okay, first of all, I'm 25, I'm definitely not too old to learn how to learn an instrument. And just like anything, I'm a beginner. It's gonna be terrible in the beginning, but I'll learn. But that's an area that I keep saying, I really wanna do, I really wanna do. That was one of my New Year's resolutions. And I've just been avoiding it because I'm terrified. And it's, I'm aware of that though. I'm aware of the fact that I'm telling myself that I'm scared and I have a deep subconscious fear that I'm incapable. But I know that I know that I know that you're supposed to feel like that in the beginning. It's why it's called imposter syndrome. You don't feel like you're supposed to be doing it. But the only way to get over imposter syndrome is to expose yourself. And so I encourage you to get to know and become friends with what your core value or not values, sorry, your core beliefs are about yourself. They've likely been adapted because of something in your life, an experience in your life, something you keep telling yourself about yourself, something somebody's told you. When we can do the inner work and start to assess what our deep beliefs are, we can then start to do the work. And the thing about our our core beliefs is they leak into so many areas of our life. If we think we're incapable of learning an instrument, there's likely a part of us that's afraid to do a lot of things in life because we hold that narrative and identity about ourselves, But when you can pivot that to say, I'm the type of person that's okay 
with being a beginner. I'm the type of person that's okay with trying and failing. I'm the type of person that's okay with being uncomfortable. That's when growth can happen. But when we stay in that same narrative of I'm stupid, I'm less than, I'm incapable, I could never, blah, blah, blah. It's like, of course that's where you're gonna stay because you believe that. What we believe is what we embody. What we embody becomes our identity and our identity is how we show up. And that causes resistance to try things and to do things because there's a block. And so the more that we can dig and do the work and identify what those core beliefs are and figure out there's probably trauma around them, there's probably experiences around them, and we can do the work, that's when we can start to progress forward and change those beliefs for ourselves. And it's so possible. It is so possible. But when we become stuck there, it, it does feel like we're numb and like that's our only reality. It can shift, but we have to be willing to do the work to face them. And last but not least, number five. And this one's, you know, we have to truly ask ourselves this. It's the thing that you want to go after isn't actually aligned. If you have resistance to doing something or you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're doing it to try to make your parents happy or your partner happy or somebody in your life happy, that's probably why you haven't gone after it yet. All, a lot of these are very internal ones, but this one is, is because we're not doing something for the right reasons. If we have resistance towards something, it could be that it's because it's not for us, right? Sometimes we think we want to do things, but internally we're like, oh, I don't really want to do that. And so we avoid doing it. And I had to ask myself that about my business. I'm like, is there a part of you that maybe doesn't want to do this? And I'm like, no, like that doesn't, that doesn't really resonate. Whereas in the past, when I got to a point of complete burnout and overwhelm in my coaching, the reason that I was avoiding it is because there was a part of me that it wasn't aligned with and I wasn't supposed to be doing it at that point in time. And so I, I very much got resistant and was pushing it away. And so you do also need to assess, are you telling yourself a story that you want to do something to try to convince yourself that you do because of the perception of others? But do you actually want to do that thing? Or are you just doing it to be perceived in a certain way because you feel like you're supposed to do it, knowing that that will never ever be sustainable. If you're doing something for the wrong reasons or to make other people happy, you will never feel fulfilled or happy. And that I just have to say through and through. If I didn't love doing my podcast, I wouldn't still be here three years later. The reason that I'm able to be here and to be consistent and to keep showing up is because I want to be here. I adore being here. I love being here. I love public speaking and talking and sharing these things. But if I had started this podcast for the perception of how other people would view me or just to say I'm a podcaster, this wouldn't be sustainable. And that's truly why I believe so many of us end up failing or giving up is because you didn't actually want to do the thing in the first place. You did it to be successful, to have perception from other people, right? To, to make money, whatever it is. You need to ask yourself if what it is that you're going after and wanting to do is 10 out of 10 aligned. And if it is, then it's worth doing the work and navigating around. But if the answer is no, that just means there's something out there for you that is aligned and asking yourself why you feel pressured to go towards something that isn't actually right for you. So my friend, that's our little chat that I wanted to have just you and me because I want you to know that these are all normal. These are all normal things that we all deal with and experience, but they're all things that have, that you have the power to work with. You have the power to improve these in your life and to change the narrative of these in your life. And that is such, again, the word powerful and uplifting, empowering belief and thought to have is that you can take these and run with them and change your life. But when we don't know what's causing that resistance or that hold back, and it's like, we just feel like, ah, oh, we're running into a wall and we wanna make progress, but we're not sure why. There's almost always a reason. And so it's taking a step back, being a detective, being curious, and asking yourself why that might be. And not shaming yourself or blaming yourself, but instead, like I said, just be curious and you'll likely land on the answer. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know I mentioned on Tuesday I was potentially gonna do an episode today about different ways to ground yourself. That episode is still on my mind, but I thought of this one last night and I thought that it would be really, really powerful and also important 
Oh my gosh, the amount of times I've said powerful in this episode, I apologize, but I do still want to do that episode about ways to ground yourself, so stay tuned because that will be coming, and I think that that is, I don't think, I know that that is very valuable information to know and to carry with you so that you can have on, on different days of your life. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope your April is continuing to go incredibly. We are a third of our way through this month, so take some time to slow down, come back to your body. As always, take a deep breath before you go about the next thing in your life and or in your life, in your day more so. And know that you are loved and I'm so grateful for you and I cannot wait to chat with you all next week. Bye you guys.